What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram and Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Now around 2011, Dej Love started to take music very seriously. She dropped her first official mixtape around 2012, One Cold Just Do It. The mixtape caught the attention of fellow Detroit native rapper Say It Ain't Tone and from then on Dej Loaf was on the way up. Like most artists, Dej Loaf was interested in music from a very young age. By the age of 10 she started rapping but only started taking music seriously after she dropped her first mixtape Just Do It around 2012. Now if you've listened to the mixtape, you notice that her sound is different from her latest stuff. The production is more boom bap and it's clear Dej Loaf hadn't found her sound just yet. Now before all of this, Dej Loaf was in a group called G4. It was me, Mad G, my best friend Mike, Logic, Wayne. My best friend brought me into the group. They had already started the group, I was the only girl. Now after working together for about a year, the group split up, mostly because they weren't making any waves in the industry. We weren't organized. We were just all over the place. It wasn't like we were performing anywhere. We were just doing music. It was actually good music. If we would have had a little help, we probably could have popped off. Who knows? Everybody graduated and went their separate ways. According to Dej Loaf, her name was inspired by a shoe that doesn't have laces on, also known as loafers. I used to wear a lot of Jordans coming up. Nikes, Jordans, a lot of gym shoes. So when I got to high school, everybody was wearing gym shoes and I was like, you know what, I got my own style. I'm gonna start wearing loafers. As of late, it's clear that Dej Loaf is not on a lot of hit records. So the question is, what happened to Dej Loaf? <laughs> Dej Loaf's career took off when she released the song, Try Me. That a nigga try me, try me. I'm gonna get his whole motherfucking family. Now I must admit, I thought Dej Loaf was a teenage boy the first time I heard Try Me. I heard the song before I watched the video. So you can imagine my shock and awe when I found out that Dej Loaf was not bred. Now as far as the charts go, the song peaked at number 45 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song went gold in 2015, solidifying Dej Loaf as an artist to look out for. The thing that made Try Me special was the buzz surrounding the song. It had that Bobby Schmurder high level of viral appeal. When speaking on how the song blew up, Dej Loaf said the following. I know a few people that having a following in Oakland here in Detroit, like Pablo Skywalker. So he uploaded a video of him dancing to my song and I uploaded it to my page. He sent a couple followers my way. Another artist, PZ, he kinda shouted me out on Instagram, sent a couple followers my way. From there, I just kept getting followers. A lot of people just like, yo, I like your song. And they kept posting videos, dancing to it and doing all type of crazy stuff. I would re-upload the videos, showing them love back and I think they liked the fact that I was doing that and it made more people want to do it. From there it just kind of took off. So shout out to Pablo Skywalker. But everything happens for a reason. Now after Try Me came out, a lot of artists started reaching out to Dej Loaf. One artist in particular is none other than the champagne poppy himself, Drizzy Drake. I was on Twitter a couple of days ago and somebody tweeted me, Drake followed you. I was like, what? I didn't know, I was like, how did you find out? So I checked my followers, seen that he followed me and was just like, wow. Later on that night, he uploaded a picture on his Instagram saying one of my lyrics, love wearing all black, you should see my closet. He had the city turned up for me. It was crazy. I don't even know how he found out about it. When Drake reached out to Dej Loaf, a lot of people assumed that Drake was going to jump on a song with her but unfortunately, it did not happen. Drake's team did however reach out to Dej Loaf and were eager to work, however, nothing came of it. You know, his people reached out to us and they want to work, so you never know. 
I think Dejlov could have benefited from the Drake stimulus package, but I guess as they say, it wasn't supposed to happen. Instead, Wiz Khalifa jumped on the song and made it even more popular than it already was. I got multiple chains, a gang of old schools that I swear I don't drive less it don't rain. Now around 2014, Dej Loaf signed to Columbia Records while rapping IDGM. IGBM, that's our brand, our thing. Swiftly after signing to Columbia Records, Dej Loaf went on to release her second mixtape, Sell Soul. The mixtape contains a song called Me, You and Hennessy, which went on to be remixed by Lil Wayne and became one of her most popular songs. Me, Hennessy and you. Me, Hennessy and you. She even appeared on the Shady XV compilation album on a song called Detroit vs Everybody. Now Little Dirk and Dej Lil started dating around 2014. They started appearing all over the place together and by 2015 they had collaborated on a few songs. In fact, in that same year, they dropped their highly popular single, My Beyonce. I was plotting for a while, now I got on where I wanna. They didn't understand, none of this was playing. The song was produced by C Slick and eventually went platinum. Now if you've watched the video, you can tell that Dirk and Dej Loaf had amazing chemistry. They looked good together as a couple, which was very confusing because a lot of people assumed Dej Loaf was into women. Nevertheless, they made a convincing couple, at least to some people. According to Dej Loaf's ex-girlfriend, the whole relationship was staged. They're not together, they're not a couple. They don't fuck around at all. I think they're trying to make it seem like they're together. I don't know what it is, but it's fake. Now despite all the doubters and haters, Dirk claimed Dej Loaf publicly in multiple interviews. When Dirk was asked to explain why Dej Loaf was the one for him, he said the following. She's amazing. She's different with the music. She came up different. She's definitely got a lot of fans and she's versatile. That's one thing about it. When we first did our song, when we got our song together, it wasn't no six or seven tries. We got in and we put it in. Now from the sound of things, nothing was being put in anywhere. Now as far as the song My Beyonce goes, a lot of people assume that Dirk wasn't referring to Dej Loaf as his Beyonce. A lot of people assumed the opposite as well, but Dirk went on to clarify that the song was about Dej Loaf and that she really was his Beyonce. Yeah, my Beyonce. We got, man, 10 other records that sound good. The one that's out is my Beyonce, so I'm referring to it. Man, I can feel the love. Now after finding his Beyonce, the pair broke up around 2016. According to Dirk, the pair were not ready for a serious relationship and were simply going with the flow. In essence, Dirk's relationship with Dej Loaf was the equivalent of a Brazilian butt lift. It may look good, but we all know it's fake. Now 2015 was a very interesting year for Dej Loaf. She dropped an EP called And See That's The Thing, which peaked at number 47 on the Billboard 200, spawning the singles Back Up and Hey There featuring Future. She also appeared in 2015's XXL Freshman Class. Now from 2015 onwards, Dej Loaf went on to drop more mixtapes, but still there was no album in sight. She dropped all jokes aside around 2016, an album with Jacquees around 2017, Go Dej Go Volume 1 around 2018, It's a Setup around 2020, and No Saint in the same year. Now even though the album with Jacquees made some noise, at that point around 2017, it was starting to look like Dej Loaf was never going to release her debut album. In 2019, she left Columbia Records records and it was only after this that she got to release her debut album, Sell Soul 2. The album did not land on the Billboard 200 and was essentially a flop as it came out years after Dej Loaf had reached her peak. She also dropped a hot song in this year called No Fear. In essence, Dej Loaf is still dropping music. Kind of. She appeared on Larry June's album around 2020 on a track called Feel So Right. The song is one of her most popular ones to date, proving that she still has something to offer the game. Many people believe that if her debut album had dropped around 2015, it would have done decent numbers. Around 2014 to 2015, Dej Loaf had an astounding level of success and buzz, but despite this, her label kept pushing her album back. It took her leaving the label to actually get a chance to drop it, and with her debut album out, at least she can say that she did it her own way. I personally think the label didn't know what to do with her. 
Unlike a lot of female rappers, Dej Loaf wasn't the type of rapper who would take off her clothes in order to sell records. At least initially. She had that tomboy, I can take your girl look. Most labels don't know what to do with that image. Her style, voice and flow was also different at the time and is often imitated today. Around 2021, she hinted at never dropping music again, but we'll wait to see if this is actually true. Dej Love gets about 2 million monthly listeners on Spotify and her most popular songs on the platform are You Belong to Somebody, Me, You and Hennessy, No Fear, Feel So Right and Hey There. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Dej Loaf in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests? Be sure to let me know down below as well. You will happen to video dropping next week. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.